What can happen is if we get a blockage anywhere within the machine, some material can get chewed up in the feeder. So what we're gonna do is have a look at how we clean that out and make sure that you're not gonna then compound an issue as it comes, comes up later down the line. So the steps we need to follow to dismantle the feeder, first of all is make sure there's no material loaded into the machine. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Bowden tube out of here, so that's this little collar clip that comes off there. Push down on the collar and pull that out. Okay, the next stage we have a screw here and a screw underneath here, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna remove the feeder from the machine for us. So we'll start at the bottom. And we're gonna do the one at the top. Always making sure we support this, so that once we become loose, we can take the feeder off and they can place it down onto the desk. The first stage in us dismantling the feeder is to remove the tension that is indicated here. Now, centre is where we want it to be while we're printing, but obviously we don't want the spring to fire different components out to out at us as soon as we're dismantling this. So, on the top of the feeder here, what we do is with the Allen key that's supplied, we go into here, tighten up the screw, which as you can see, moves the indicator up towards the top of the feeder. Once we're here, we can then start to undo all four of these bolts there. Once all those are loose, we're going to put a thumb on the silver ring there and our finger on the white at the top and just pull that, those apart and that will then give us one half and two halves of the feeder. What we're now going to do is dismantle all the different sections within here so that we can give them a thorough clean and make sure that everything goes back together properly. So we have the little red icon at the bottom here which just guides the material through, we'll lift that away. The indicator here, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that so it's pointing up and then we can pull rock that out with the spring all as one assembly. And then we have the lever here that holds the bearing in place and the pressure release section. And this will come out as one solid assembly like so. And then we can just separate those out as two separate parts. That's then the feeder fully disassembled. Once the feeder is fully disassembled, we're going to focus on this area here where we have the milled wheel. And what we want to do is try and clean this out with a soft bristle brush. Now this can be something either a brass brush, nylon brush, or really easily accessible is a toothbrush. And we can just use that and go in, give that as a quick brush through to make sure any debris of material is cleaned out of all the different nails. And also sometimes we can get an accrual of material around this bearing. So again, just giving that a quick brush as it's all open and accessible, just to make sure as it goes back together, we're not gonna be introducing any areas for material to start slipping. Now we've cleaned everything down, it's all down to the reassembly. Now, as you can see, we've got little bits of grease around here and here. So what we can do is the Euro grease that we use for the Z screw. We can also apply a small amount here and here just to keep things moving in a smooth area. There we go. So we can apply a small amount of grease just around here. And again, around here, because these are the moving parts inside the machine, just to make sure that things don't stick. Now what we want to do is make sure that this and this section interlock like so. Once they're in position, what we can then do is position those two onto here so that then that sequence will open and close that lever as demonstrated. The next stage is going to be applying the spring back into position. So we're going to put the spring into the little cutout just here. And then what we will also do is rotate that around and you should hear it click into position once everything's snug. Most important thing that you can do at this stage is make sure that this screw is in this section here within the feeder. It's very common that people put this on the outside and then you don't be able to apply any pressure to your filament and you're still going to have some printing problems. Okay, the next thing is the silver ring. We're going to put that back at the bottom here. And you can just see there's a wider profile and a thinner profile up at the top. What I'm going to do is slide in there so the wider profile is on the outside of the feeder. Again, with the collar, that will go into this section just to put the top there. And then finally, we have the little red guide tube, which will just slot perfectly into position there. That is what we should be expecting to see before we put the cover back on. If you don't have that, just rewind the video and redo those step by step. What we're then gonna do is pick up the cover here. And as you can see, we have the little bearing here that's gonna go over the nailed wheel. Just gonna rotate that over, and there'll be a little bit of a push on there until it clicks into position. And then we're going to put the screws back into each corner and just tighten those up. So we'll screw those back into position as if nothing happened. And 
And now that's the feeder all fully assembled and back together. There's one key thing that we need to do before it goes back onto the machine, and that's to reset the tension that's here, going down to the halfway mark where we can see a small little cutout. So what we're gonna do is just put the screwdriver back into the top there and loosen off that screw until we're happy that that is somewhere within that halfway indicator. So the feeder is gonna slide straight back onto the machine just here, and then we're gonna use those two screws again to fix that into position. So we'll just locate that top one, same with the bottom. Come back into that one because that wasn't very smooth. Tighten those up, and then we have the Bowden tube just here. It's gonna slide back into the top. Lift that back up, slide our collar underneath there. And that's our feeder fully disassembled and reassembled. So that's quite an involved process in order for us to clean out the feeder. But what we can do is as long as we follow that step by step, you can be guaranteed that the machine will be firing up in tip top condition again.